Hello, I'm Dr. Tom O'Brien from thedoctor.com. We've been hearing about the swine flu and warnings about the swine flu. Just this week, the, from the White House, the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology has told us that up to half of the USA may be infected by the flu, and that up to 90,000 people may die, and up to 2 million people may be hospitalized. We've seen it on the front page of the paper this week. Flu could infect half of USA. So, uh, obviously, we don't want to get the flu, but this is a very potent flu, and many of us will. So how do you prevent that? Well, you, there are many things you already know how to do. You want to eat well. Stop eating so much garbage. You know the things that are good for you and those that are not. So for a little bit of time here, clean up your act as much as you can. Eat just the good foods. Drink plenty of water. Take some extra vitamins. Wash your hands regularly. Those are the things that you can do, and there's others. But what I want to talk about is that if you do get the flu, how do you prevent it from being fatal? for you or your family. This flu is being associated very closely with the 1918 pandemic flu that killed, I believe it was 20 million people around the world. In that 1918 flu, people went to work in the morning, healthy and vibrant, they didn't come home at night, they were gone in one day, in one day. And it terrified everyone, and no one could explain why that was happening. Well, they found four people buried in the Arctic tundra uh, who had died on an army base up in Alaska, and they buried them in the tundra in the night from the 1918 flu. They found them just a couple of years ago. They dug them up, they did autopsy and biopsy to find out why they died. They figured out why they died. How did that flu work? How did that virus work? Here's what happens. When you breathe in that virus, there are immune systems in your lungs called macrophages. Macrophages are a high-powered rifle, and they fire a chemical bullet called a cytokine that destroys the virus. That's a good thing. We want macrophages, and if we didn't have them to destroy viruses and bacteria, we wouldn't be here today. That's a good protection for us. But what happened with that virus in 1918 is that that high-powered rifle, the trigger got stuck in the open position and became a machine gun. Pa, 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 pa. Destroyed the virus, but then kept firing cytokines, which hit the lung tissue, irritated the lung tissue, inflamed the lung tissue, inflammation causes edema, edema is swelling, swelling is um, pneumonia, and they drowned in their own pneumonia in one day. That's how they died in the 1918 flu. Researchers have been seeing and following this current flu, the swine flu, and seeing that people are responding the same way around the world, that those that are dying, a large percentage of them are young, healthy people. Now, why is it young, healthy people that died with this flu? Well, because young, pe healthy people have the virility, they have the energy, they have the ammunition to supply their immune system. So the trigger gets stuck in the open position, so the immune system says, I need energy, I need ammunition, I need ammunition. And healthy people have a lot of energy to supply the ammunition for the immune system to do what it's programmed to do, but it's just stuck in the open position. But they've got the energy. If you were elderly, or if you were weaker, or if you were a child, you didn't quite have enough energy, you got sick from the flu, but you didn't die. That's why they died. Just two years ago, a paper was published that showed that the spring on the trigger that pops it back to turn off the trigger, the spring on the trigger is controlled by vitamin D. So if you have a vitamin D insufficiency or a vitamin D deficiency, you're prone to having that trigger be stuck in the open position, and you can have a much more dangerous effect if you catch the flu, which the government says up to half of the USA may catch. So you want to make sure your vitamin D levels are great, not just okay, you want them great. How do you do that? Take some extra vitamin D for the next three, four months. A couple of drops a day, very safe, easy to do, and papers have just come out that there's a new type of vitamin D called mycelized vitamin D that increases your blood levels five times better than any other form of vitamin D, which means you need less to get the same results. So it's even safer for you and your children. You can find out more about this mycelized vitamin D at www.thedr.com. Take a look at this, read the articles we have there, make a decision to protect yourself. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Tom O'Brien from thedoctor.com.